next problem up. Let's begin by reading that question sentence always. Again, it's never an option. Always start with the question sentence. What was the plane's speed on the second leg? All right, two questions, everybody. Two questions. One, what does speed translate to in terms of the topic of discussion for this problem? Speed translates to rate. Exactly. So let me highlight that. We want rate. We want rate. Now, on top of that, everybody, on top of that, specifically, the rate for what are we looking for? Is it the entire flight? Is it the first part, the second part? What is this rate specifically tied to? Yes, yeah, second leg. It's right there in the sentence. It's right there. So we are specifically looking for the rate for the second leg. Specifically, we're looking for the rate for the second leg. Now that we know that, now that we have that envisioned, what we're going to do now is try, key point, key, you know, key word there is try. We are going to try to set up our formula in that context. So I'm going to say distance for the second leg. And I'm, gonna, I'm just going to use this right there. The distance for the second leg equals the rate for the second leg multiplied by the time for the second leg. We have got to be consistent. Now let's see, okay, let's see if these pieces of information can be found in the problem. If not, if let's say, you know, given that we're looking for rates, I'm just gonna mark that right now. Let's say we do find the distance, but we don't have the time. Well, guess what? We are going to have to find a way to find the time. Because once we have the time, then we can calculate for the rate. So I hope you see it that way. We have the distance and the time that we have to find. Then we plug them in and solve. Let's see what we have. A plane flies 150 miles at 300 miles an hour. Then 250 miles more. Okay, that's all they say about the second leg. 250 miles more. So that's my distance. I'm going to plug that in here. 250 miles and then we have the rate that we're looking for everybody do you see that we are not given the time for the second leg instead we are given the time for the whole flight do we do we see that do we realize that do we notice that good so now that we notice that let's figure out a way to get that time what other time do I have? I have the whole trip. I also have the first leg, 150 miles at 300 miles an hour. When I look at that, I say, okay, I have distance. I have rate. I can find time. I can absolutely find time. So let me do that. Let me highlight that in blue. Let me set up a little working area for myself here in blue on the side. And let's find for that first leg, let's find the time. So we have the distance being 150 miles. The rate is 300 miles per hour. And we multiply that by time. So clearly what we have to do is divide both sides by 300 to get the time by itself. Everyone, what do we notice about the relationship? 150 divided by 300. What are we going to get exactly when we do that division? And even, you know, you don't have to be a pro at long division to know this. What I notice is that 150 is half of 300. 150 is exactly half of 300. Knowing that relationship, I can write the time as half. Half of one, 0 0.5. And there we are. So the time is half of an hour for the first leg. And we know that the total time is 1.5 hours. So my party people, you tell me, you tell me here, what is the missing time that we're going to be adding in? Half an hour plus what gives us an hour and a half? Exactly one hour. Exactly. So we're going to, we're going to plug that in right here. One hour for that second leg. And now we're good. 
because anything times one is just going to be itself. It's just going to be itself. So by de facto, the rate is going to be 250 miles per hour. And that's going to drive in the correct answer as B. All right, so let's take a look at this unique example here. Let's just take a look step by step. The first part that we look at is the question sentence as always, and it reads, what was the original size? Okay, sounds good. We want the original size. Sweet. So everybody, can we confirm that in the chat box? It says, what was the original size? So we want to say, you know, original size equals blank. Can we confirm that? That's what we want. The units here are megabytes, so MB. Can we confirm that before we get started here? That what we are looking for is the original size. We notice how I'm being specific there, right? I repeated myself five, six, seven times on the same exact detail, but it's important to understand your grounding. So we have that. And now the next thing I'm gonna look at is the information I'm given. And if you take the moment on this next step, to identify your information properly, you're gonna see why the wrong answer is C. I'll show you right now. Here we go. It says, after a 30% reduction, okay, let me write that down. 30% reduction, okay. It says, a file shrank to 56 megabytes. Okay, so the result equals 56 megabytes. Okay, so this is going to be everybody. You tell me, you tell me that 56 megabytes is the final size. Is that right, everybody? It's not the, it's not the, the amount that we've reduced by. That's the final size, right? Yeah, it is. It says again, after the reduction, it shrank to 56 megabytes. So, Right there, this file is 56 megabytes. That's the final size. Why do I keep repeating these details, huh? Why do I keep doing that? Well, let's write our formula out. The percent times the original equals the result. Let me show you why this is so important, knowing that the percent and the result represent the same thing. Look at what's wrong with this. If I blindly plug in 30% times the original equals the resultant 56 megabytes, look at what's wrong with this, everybody. It's wrong because the 30% represents how much we were reducing by. This is the reduction. Again, we reduced by 30%. And when you look at the 56, everybody, does the 56 represent what we reduced by or what we got to, what we, what we reduced to? Yeah, this is what we reduced by. This is the final. This is what we get after we reduce. So everybody, let me ask you this. In this problem, in this setup, is the percent and is the result, are they representative of the same thing? Are they representing the same thing as we currently see it on the screen? Yeah, the answer there is going to be a no. The answer is going to be no, because the percent represents reduction. The, the result represents the final. This doesn't make sense. And so to make it make sense, there's one little thing that you have to do. Shout out to my folks in the chat box already putting in the work right on. One thing that we can do super easy here is again, just make sure that these line up because I'm already given the final amount. I'm not going to do anything with that. I'm going to leave that as the final amount. I'm going to want to get the final percent. I'm going to want to get the final percent here. Let me show you how to do that. If the original size is a hundred percent, if that's the original, well, guess what? Everybody, what does reduction mean? What does reduction mean to reduce? What does that mean? Yeah, to subtract. So let's subtract 30% because again, that's the reduction. 
And when I do that subtraction, when I commit to it, I get a result of 70%. So the result is 70% of the original size right there. This represents the final. The final is 70% of that original amount. And so what I'll do is this right here. Get rid of the reduction, the 30%. I'll put in the 70% right there. And now I'm good to go because I'm going to write this as a decimal 0.7. You can write 0.70 if you want to, but I don't like giving myself too much work. I'll just go ahead and put 0.7 times X. So I'll just say times the original just to keep it easier. And now all I got to do is divide both sides by 0.7 and look at what I got. Booyah right there. There we are. Don't think that the answer is going to be eight. Be very careful. We're going to cancel out right there on the left side and our original value. Our original value right here. We can just go ahead and use our little decimal rule right away by moving it to the right once and then right to the one, you know, right once over here too. So what we now have is 560 divided by seven. 560 divided by seven. That's going to be eight with a zero at the end, which is going to be 80. So the original file size is 80 megabytes. That is the original file size right there. B 80 megabytes. If you would have kept the 30%, you may have gotten the 168 megabytes. That's what you would have gotten. But we have to remember that the formula matters so much. You have to consider consistency and representing everything the right way. If we do that, then we'll be in a great position every time we step to the plate.